and welcome to Clarity Revolution. Throughout history, our children and future generations have been exposed to information that portrays Africa as a land of backwardness and barbarism. European written textbooks have presented Africa's past as nothing but misery and uncivilized conditions. From a young age, we were repeatedly told that without the slave trade, Africa would never have experienced civilization or salvation. We were made to believe that contact with Europeans was the sole reason for our exposure to civilization, and that accepting Jesus Christ was a consequence of the slave trade. Some African Christian professors in history departments even argue that without the slave trade, Africans would not have embraced Christianity. This narrative, reinforced by African parents, has resulted in the indoctrination and brainwashing of our children, perpetuating a state of mental slavery. What do you think this image is right here? Look at this image. What do you think this is? Who is this right here? The devil. Okay, so this is what the problem is in our community. From little, from little we are taught that this white image of Christ is the true image. The young man said that the black image is the devil. And this is what the point is. He said, this is Jesus and this is the devil. Right? Those are his exact words. I'm asking y'all, which one resembles him? Which image? This one. So I want you to see the mindset. When we see images that look and resemble us, we see it as evil. But images that look like those conquistadors or those European slave owners, we say that's heavenly, that's godly, that's Jesus, when that's not biblical. So what he's showing you is Jesus the Christ, according to the Bible, looks like a black man. Europeans to claim that Africans had no well-established political structures prior to their arrival in the mid-15th century. Lord Lugard, a colonial governor general in Nigeria, left India and implemented a British colonial policy known as the Policy of Indirect Rule in 1906. It was introduced with the hope that it would be as successful as it was in India. In Nigeria, it was initially established in the northern House of Fulani Emirates, where the people were submissive to Islamic rulers, resulting in relative success. However, when the policy was brought to the Yoruba land in the western part of Nigeria, which was dominated by Europeans, it only achieved partial success. The Yoruba people, known for their education, had the ability to challenge the morals, ethics, and ethos of colonialism. Unfortunately, when Lord Lugard introduced the policy to the eastern part of Nigeria, which was predominantly inhabited by the Igbo and Ija peoples, it became a total failure. In 1929, a group of Igbo women in the eastern region violently revolted against the oppressive British colonial policy, known as the indirect policy. This protest was ignited by the tyranny of local chiefs appointed by Lord Lugard, called Warrant Chiefs. These chiefs, who were outcasts forced upon the Igbo people, became a nightmare for the villagers due to their excessive taxation. The protest resulted in the loss of many lives, particularly women who bravely resisted. The exploitation of Africa's resources by Europeans commenced with the theft of our palm oil, which eventually led to the first war between them and King Koko of the Nembe Kingdom in what is known today as Bielsa State. The British colonial police staff facilitated the end of indirect rule in Nigeria. The indirect true colonial policy can only be successful where there are well-established traditional authorities. The Igbos had a system called the village democracy. The House of Fulanis in the northern part of Nigeria had what we call the emirate system which was headed by an emir, while the Yorubas had a decentralized political setting where power is shared among different established local authorities such as the Oyamisi, the Ogboni cult, and the Alafin. If our ancestors can rise against indirect rule, then we can rise today against colonialism. In the spirit of Kwame Nkrumah, neo-colonialism is the highest stage of imperialism and every right-thinking African will question the evils of neocolonialism today that has crippled, that has paralyzed the African economy, and kept it underdeveloped into two. If you have listened to this stage, I have some bonus tips to share on how you can start breaking free from mental slavery. 1. Question everything. Challenge the narratives and assumptions presented to you. 2. Read about the untold history of the black race and the fallen African civilizations. 3. Invest in teaching our children about African history, ensuring they have a comprehensive and accurate understanding. 4. Start teaching our children African culture and spirituality, fostering pride and connection to our roots. 5. Read Blacks in Antiquity by Cheikh Anta Diop, a groundbreaking work on African history. 6. Read The World in Africa by Webb Du Bois, 
a profound exploration of the African diaspora and its contributions. 7. Read Stolen Legacy by George James, shedding light on the African origins of ancient Greek philosophy. And welcome to Clarity Revolution, a home of knowledge. We invite you to join our community and embark on your awakening journey with us. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, where we share valuable insights and discussions. Together, we can challenge the narratives and work towards a brighter future.